When Marquez fell, everyone in the arena didn't hesitate for a second to laugh at him. After all, his detractors had been waiting a long time to witness such an unprecedented moment. What they didn't anticipate was what would happen next. The way he fell remains an object of study to this day for those who laughed during his fall. That's why I assure you the images you're about to see will leave you incredulous. Nothing and no one could prepare you for what comes next. Content To relive this unique moment in the golden history of boxing, we have to go back to November 27, 2010. That night, the lightweight champion of the World Boxing Association and the World Boxing Organization, Juan Manuel Marquez, was set to step into the ring at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas and face his destiny against a true Spartan, Michael Katsidis. This wasn't just any challenger. This Spartan had recently fought a brutal battle against Joel Casamayor. As if that weren't enough, he had also engaged in an all-out war not long ago with the fierce Juan Diaz. And far from being exhausted, the Spartan seemed to be at the peak of his powers. On the other side of the equation, the tricolor warrior's last two fights had been against Mayweather and the grueling yet deeply satisfying rematch against Juan Diaz. Despite his immense contributions to the sport, Katsidis made the mistake of disrespecting the Aztec fighter. To him, Marquez was someone who should promptly step aside. After all, he was nothing more than a retired fighter and a tired old man who no longer deserved to be called champion. The Australian with Greek roots didn't seem to understand very well that, on this side of the world, words carry no weight unless backed by the strength of one's fists. His hunger to retire the 40-year-old Mexican was undeniable, but it wasn't enough to secure the biggest slice of the pie. At 37 years old, Marquez had an incredible professional record of 51 victories, contrasted with only five previous defeats. It goes without saying that the tricolor monarch didn't seem ready to give up his throne. The Spartan, meanwhile, had a record of just 27 victories and had been defeated twice. Would his big mouth be the reason for the third setback in his questionable rise to the top? The bout was scheduled for 12 rounds, but, spoiler alert, it took only a third of that to reach an astonishing conclusion. With Kenny Bayless as the third man in the ring, a true clash of warriors with powerful bloodlines began. With an Aztec and a Spartan on the battlefield, no one could remain indifferent to the events you're about to witness. Fight Summary From the very beginning, the contenders battled for control of the fight in the center of the ring. Katsidis gave his best effort to claim Marquez's crown, but the Mexican's left hand repeatedly sent him back to square one. Good jab by Katsidis on the chin, good luck. The biggest puncher you faced, plan to know. Well, Pacquiao had him down four times. For the Spartan, this was the opportunity of a lifetime. He believed the seven-year age difference would give him the advantage that only youthful vitality can provide. However, he hadn't accounted for the fact that, in exceptional cases, the experience that comes with age can be an even deadlier weapon. Like a true master of deception, Marquez wielded lightning-fast counterpunches, reminiscent of pure dynamite. With heavy blows landing from both fighters, victory would not come easily for either. In Marquez's chest, like a... like a... Yes. So, what... Can he do to make it? He has to sell out, do everything possible to upset Marquez, lean on him, push him. He's got to, he's got to make Marquez say, "I don't want to have to deal with this stuff." For 12 rounds. By the end of the second round, the crowd had already been treated to a clean display of magnificent body shots. The sheer volume of punches ensured there wasn't more than a three-second lull in the action. And with all eyes fixed on the ring, the slightest mistake could jeopardize anyone's reputation. Casitas. Yeah, Marquez is, is still picking everything, but the pressure that Casitas is putting on him is, is going to make him have to fight very hard. The perfect body shots. So Those left hooks to the body, unbelievable. Now the fight is turning out to be just what I thought it was going to be. Look at the combination. In the first minute of the third round, Katsidis landed what was perhaps one of the best punches of his career. A devastating left hook connected squarely with Marquez's jaw, sending the Mexican crashing to the canvas. The audience gasped in disbelief, many covering their faces as they struggled to process what they had just witnessed. Straight through. Hard left hook by Katsidis and Mar In that moment, doubts about Marquez's resilience flooded the arena, with some prematurely calling it the beginning of the end for the champion. Meanwhile, Katsidis saw the knockdown as a reason to inflate his already overconfident ego. 
Though Marquez rose to his feet and was cleared by referee Kenny Bayless to continue, he now faced a new challenge, an even more aggressive and reckless Katsidis. Pinned against the ropes, Marquez endured what was immediately dubbed a terrifying round of boxing, proving once again that age was no obstacle for him. Dinamita had dismantled young prospects before and was ready to do it again, especially if it meant silencing those who laughed during his fall. Katsidis would have to pay for his audacity. Unbeknownst to him, he would soon become collateral damage of his own successful strike. We shall see whether he does. Now's the time to go to his body as he just did. That's the punch that started it all. Casita's about to throw some left uppercuts or something up through the middle. He's trying to shoot everything on the top. He's going to his guard down, and Bastini's poured through it. And now he's trying to pour it on. And here you go, Marquez is coming back very left much hook, like he left hook, right the same, same as he did with the. In the fourth round, Katsidis continued stalking Marquez like a predator closing in on its prey. What he didn't realize was that the Mexican was the true hunter. With patience and cunning, Marquez shifted the fight back to the center of the ring, preparing to exact his revenge. 28-28, you know, all even over the fight at the end of the third round. Good right hand by Katsidis. Marquez get out of trouble like that. Yeah, right a few times. By the fifth round, Marquez's dramatic fall was already a distant memory. The strength of his offense created a new series of highlights with every exchange. The champion made sure to deliver a masterclass in boxing, responding to Katsidis' body shots with the warrior spirit that defined him. Each blow silenced the doubters, one by one. Makes sense. Coming back from knocking very well yes, so you to the be, best of the yeah, body. He needs to crowd get in very close. He throws to him, so he needs to stay very close. Gal fight. Both guys are bombing up for uppercuts. Whoever shoots the punch up with the center seems to have skipped it. By the end of the round, it was clear. Marquez was the king of epic comebacks. And a phone booth fight is a marvelous stage for becoming a phone booth fight. He's because he can't, he doesn't place his punches that good, so he has to smother Marquez. What an amazing offense. In the sixth round, Marquez had fully taken control of the fight. Katsidis' attacks were becoming less effective, and despite being cornered multiple times, Marquez seemed perfectly at ease. The Spartan was confronted with a harsh reality. His opponent was not merely human. The Aztec warrior's triumph Marquez endured Katsidis' most infamous punches as if his skull were made of steel. No matter how hard the Spartan hammered to break through his fortress, he couldn't inflict any real damage. With his back against the ropes, Marquez demonstrated throughout the seventh round why he was the reigning champion. Pro and con. Another Just like this fight. Katsidis. Crowd got excited about Katsidis' left hook. Channeling the spirit of a Caesar of boxing, the tricolor fighter leaned on the ropes to unleash fierce combinations directly to Katsidis' head. The Spartan was visibly tiring, but as they say, there's nothing more dangerous than a wounded animal. However, this one was already on its last legs, a fact made clear when Katsidis grabbed the ropes for support at the sound of the bell. The latter half of the fight, Katsidis landed a huge right hand. Marcus comes back with... Katsidis' right eye is beginning to close from the damage caused by Marquez. So he'll, he'll maybe throw a punch up at the top and get his hands up, then he'll snatch him to the bottom of the left hook. The pressure is for Marquez, but the accuracy of the punches is still Marquez. But Amazing. Marquez began the eighth round as if it were the first. In hindsight, this marked the beginning of the end. Katsidis attempted to pin Marquez against the ropes once again, but the Mexican had no intention of being predictable. Moving strategically around the ring, Marquez understood he needed to drain the last reserves of the Spartan's energy. Allowing himself to be chased wasn't about being the mouse to Katsidis' Greek cat. It was the calculated move of a mastermind executing a plan to perfection. The final seconds of the round showcased punches that were merely a preview of what was to come. He just thinks, get up and keep going and watch the level for so long too. Well, he has in touch against one of the greatest fighters in modern history. Katsidis entered the ninth round in his worst physical condition yet. 
This was when Marquez brought out the heavy artillery. He delivered devastating combinations targeting Katsidis' body and head with little to no response from his opponent. When a left uppercut snapped Katsidis' head back, it was clear the fight was over for him. Marquez immediately went into beast mode, punishing his opponent severely for the knockdown earlier in the fight. A second uppercut, this time with the right hand, sealed the Spartan's fate. Defeat was now inevitable, but Katsidis, relying solely on pride, refused to kneel before the champion. Recognizing the futility and danger of the situation, referee Kenny Bayless stepped in, mercifully stopping the fight. Talk between the rounds and that's about it. I have very little talk in between the rounds. There's blood trickling from Marquez's right nostril. He may have... Marquez opening up again. He finds the target. Uppercut, uppercut, uppercut. Everybody up through the middle. That's where all the most effective punches... Looking to finish. Watch the combinations flow. He knows for Pacquiao in this fight. Is he ever? Variety of punches from so many different angles where the Cedars can't even see him. And Kenny Bellis knocks the fight. Marquez's demonic offensive had wreaked enough havoc on Katsidis' body, mind, and soul. Allowing it to continue would have made Bayless an accomplice to manslaughter. Thus, at 2 minutes and 14 seconds of the ninth round, Juan Manuel Marquez was declared the winner by technical knockout. Once again, he proved that he who laughs last laughs best. Price Spots email closing. Thank you for reading this far. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Do you think Katsidis ever stood a real chance against Marquez, or was that dramatic knockdown just a stroke of luck? Let me know in the comments.